Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called The Thousand Faces of Dunja. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. A long time ago, there's a legend of a great power named Dunja that's able to manipulate the elements in the universe, allowing its user to control creation and destruction. The mysterious Wuin clan has been searching for this cosmic force in order to protect humanity from invading forces of the universe. In the outer stratosphere of the Earth, a giant meteorite is heading towards the planet and lands in the nearby forest, causing a large explosion as it begins to glow red. Somewhere in the city of Kaifan, Dao is a newly appointed constable who's searching for criminals by asking around the local stores. He meets a very unique looking woman who tells him that he should stop searching for the faces on the drawings as they're all clearly made up. Their arguments are cut short when Dao sees a man that resembles one of the criminals and begins following the suspect. The woman sees this and also takes out her demon detector, showing that there is a dangerous monster nearby as well. The constable follows the large man carrying a bow with a goldfish inside and eventually arrives in a hotel, where the man yells at the owner to give him a room. Seeing the rude behavior of the customer, the owner refuses, giving the excuse that pets are not allowed inside the building. The large man becomes furious and threatens that he'll eat the pet, but the hotel owner laughs, not caring about the man's actions. Suddenly, the goldfish inside the container grows into a giant monster and proceeds to devour the large man, while everyone runs and screams in fear. Before the demon can swallow the owner, Dao rushes to attack the creature, but the fish monster knocks him backwards with incredible strength. The woman from before is here as well, and she throws a table at the creature, trapping it under as she tries to contain it. The giant fish quickly breaks free and rips through the furniture, as it grows even bigger than before. It charges towards the woman and tries to eat her, but she grabs the creature's tongue and kicks it in the face, throwing it all the way into the second floor. The monster tries to run away by climbing on the roof, while Dao chases the fish closely behind. The woman transforms into a piece of clothing and levitates in the air, chasing after the monster as well. She eventually lands back on the ground, turning into a monk and follows the monster's trail using her detector. The magical device leads her into a brothel, where she also finds the police officer looking for the creature. The woman reveals her true identity known as Dragonfly, and tells the constable to go home, as the demon is clearly too much for him. Dao refuses to listen and rushes upstairs into the second floor, but only finds the working girl that he frequents often, and no signs of anything else. Dragonfly follows behind quickly and arrives in the room, but she immediately notices that something is not right as she stares into the painting on the wall. The fish in the drawing with three eyes begins moving and turns into the monster, but Dragonfly manages to capture the demon using her magical net that prevents the creature from growing larger. The woman then erases the police officer's memories, putting him back to where he was in the morning. It turns out that Dragonfly is from the Wuyin clan, and they have a secret base underground where they can monitor any demonic presence. The eldest member of the group, who they call the First Brother, notices something strange about the demon that they captured. After analyzing the creature's aura, he tells Dragonfly that the monster she caught is a trap using the sign language of their clan and leaves the room immediately. He feels that their enemy this time is very powerful, as he can sense the creature's aura even from here. He told the second brother, Yun, to follow the clues that the late master has left behind in order to find the holder of the great power known as Dunja and the future successor of their guild. He will personally go to the city of Lo to meet the weapons master, who's recently found a legendary weapon known as the Slayer of Gods. Dragonfly immediately gathers all her guildsmen and tells them using the sign language to relocate and leave the fish demon behind. Before she leaves, the woman carves out a clue for the second brother so that he can find their location after his return. At the same time, Yun has arrived at a hospital after following the clues left by his master. He sneaks into the basement of the building where their most dangerous patient is held, and finds a series of scratch marks that looks like it was made by a giant creature. The man walks into the room, only to see a young woman sitting on the floor. He introduces himself to the girl and finds out that her name is Rin, but she doesn't seem to be sick at all. He offers her food and notices that the woman has a unique birthmark, which resembles the clue that his master left behind. Suddenly, the woman's eyes begin turning blue while she grows into a giant creature, and a loud scream can be heard all the way from the outside. 
Meanwhile, in the city of Kaifan, the people began noticing a large amount of worms everywhere in the streets, and the meteorite that landed begins hatching open, releasing a large flying creature into the air. An earthquake shakes the entire city, and the Wuying clan notices that the temple of the ancestor have sunken into a large hole. They speculate that this must be the demon's doing, and they plan to go inside to see what the creature is after. The group enters the underground tunnel and eventually finds a large area that contains a sealing formation, likely used to trap a powerful demon. Strangely, the container has the name of their guild written on it, and the center is surrounded by skeletons, presumably consisting of the previous guild members. They examine the seal closer and are surprised to see that the creature inside is still alive. Suddenly, they hear a scream from above and sees a man drop down from the caves. It turns out that the police constable is here as well in order to find out the origin of the earthquake. The guild members see the man lying on the floor and tells him to leave immediately, as this place is about to become very dangerous. They hear the creature coming inside the caves and rushes out, only to see the entity transform into a devil-like monster that levitates in the air. The red creature looks at the containment seal and begins releasing a shockwave, sending the guild members flying backwards and stunning them with the noise. The demon breaks off the seal and releases the creature inside, which resembles a giant bat that's capable of flying as well. The black demon charges towards the people and knocks them away easily one by one. Dragonfly recovers and tries to fight back using her gadgets, but the monster breaks through the weapons and knocks her to the ground. The demon then conjures up its powers and lifts the woman in the air, planning to finish her off as it brings her closer. Dao sees this and charges at the monster, trying to save the girl, but the demon quickly counters by grabbing onto the man's arm and cutting off one of his legs. Dragonfly sees that Dao is dying and quickly tackles him away from the monster, which results in the man losing his arm as well. Realizing that there's no way they can win, the guild members throw bombs at the caves and takes the opportunity to escape into the waters. The group makes it back to their hideout and tries their best to save the constable and stop his bleeding. Surprisingly, the second brother has made it to their location as well, surviving his visit in the hospital and bringing back the girl named Ring. He explains that the young girl they see in front of them is the person destined to be their leader, as everyone looks at him in disbelief. Yun tells his comrades that when he entered the hospital and met the girl, she quickly transformed into a giant creature that resembles a peacock. The monster began attacking Yun furiously, but he was able to reverse the transformation by hitting the creature's heart and turning the girl back to human once again. He shows the people the birthmark on the girl's arm, which they quickly recognize as the symbol of their guild master. But Dragonfly is skeptical of the girl, as Rin doesn't seem to remember anything about her past. They also erase the memories of Dao, as he can't be a police officer anymore because of the injuries, and they give him artificial limbs so that he can walk by himself. The team decides to head towards the city of Lo and meet up with the first brother now that they found the supposed leader of their entire guild. At the same time, the weapon master is meeting with the leaders of the five guilds in order to figure out the true nature of the legendary weapon, the Slayer of Gods. The leaders come closer while the man opens the container, only revealing that it's empty inside. However, when the leader of the Tang Guild examines the box further, it begins transforming, revealing a glowing orb that slowly becomes larger. The guild leaders then begin using their individual powers on the box, and it transforms even further, eventually turning into a giant dagger at the hands of the Flame Master. The Weapon Master is surprised that the legendary weapon is somehow related to their powers, but notices something wrong with the Tao leader, as the man never used any of his powers. He also realizes that the man has a similar aura as the fish demon that was captured, suspecting that the leader is actually a demon in disguise. It turns out that the Weapon Master is actually the first brother who transformed into the old man prior to the meeting in order to single out the demon. The first brother then begins chanting as he uses a sealing technique, trapping the demon inside the illusion that he created. Seeing that the cover is blown, the creature begins transforming into its true form as it breaks free from the mental prison. The red demon unleashes her powers and knocks back all the guild leaders at the same time. The black demon flies in and takes the dagger from the flame master, landing on top of the building. The creature reveals that he has control over all the guild leaders after tricking them into ingesting the herbs that boosted their powers but also made them into his puppets. He orders the leaders to attack the first brother, and the red demon takes the orb while the man's not looking. 
the clan leaders began using their individual powers and blasting the first brother with devastating attacks one after the other, forcing the man to retreat onto the statue. He then gets bombarded from above as well, and falls under the broken statue, apparently getting crushed by the massive weight. The flame master continues to attack the man, turning the structure into flames and rubbles. The black demon reveals that he actually created the Slayer of Gods using the powers of the five guilds, and the real plan for this meeting was to cripple the Wu Ying clan by killing their strongest member. Meanwhile, the team arrives at the city of Lo, and they take shelter inside a hotel as they search for the first brother's whereabouts. Dao decides to say goodbye to the guild members, as he doesn't want to overstay his welcome, realizing that he's not part of the clan. He walks inside Ring's room to say farewell, but notices that the dead flower on the table is coming back to life. The girl explains that she always used to make the flowers bloom when she was feeling bored, but never really knew the full extent of her powers. She tells Dao to sit down and show her his wounds, and the girl begins focusing her energy inside the man's arm, making it regenerate as Dao screams in pain. Amazingly, his entire arm is grown back in no time, and the same thing begins happening to his leg as well. However, the whole process was extremely taxing on the girl's body, causing blood to run out from her head which eventually renders her unconscious. On the other side, Dragonfly and her team notice the incoming danger as they are quickly ambushed by the leaders from the other clans. Numerous flying blades bombard the area, shredding everything into pieces as the leader of the tank guild arrives to kill everyone. They all try to attack the man at the same time, but are quickly knocked away by the shockwave that's created from the man's power. Dragonfly rushes in to fight the guild leader alone, but after exchanging a few hits, she gets wounded by the man's magic which knocks her back into the buildings. Dao rushes towards her to help, but the woman is shocked to see that the constable has regained his limbs. The enemy approaches closer to finish them off, but Dragonfly refuses to give up and decides to fight, giving her comrades a chance to escape. The opponent throws the blades at Dragonfly, but Dao jumps in to protect her, and surprisingly was able to stop the attack by obtaining control over the flying shredders. Dao takes this opportunity to send the weapons back at the man, and knocks him flying into the buildings. Dragonfly decides to run with the teammates, but Dao secretly stays behind after obtaining incredible powers from the limbs that he regained. Even though he's not fully able to control his abilities, the powers are enough to disable the leader of the tank guild as he holds the man by his neck using one hand. Suddenly, a barrage of flames are thrown towards both of them and turns the guild leader into dust but doing little damage to Dao. The flame master arrives and charges at the man with the intention to kill, but gets knocked back easily into the air. Dao runs quickly towards the opponent, leaping into the air and landing a devastating uppercut, then knocking the man into the ground, killing him as well. Meanwhile, Dragonfly runs into the weapon master, who offers to help them and bring them to the first brother. The woman hesitates but takes the offer, as she has little options. They arrive in a remote forest away from the fights, and the weapon master transforms back into the first brother, showing that the man survived the attack from earlier. He tells the two that he found the true identity of Rin, and she's not the successor of their clan. In fact, she's a weapon made by the demons for the purpose of destroying their guild. The man then turns to attack Rin immediately by charging towards her, but the girl was rescued just in time by someone that looks exactly like the first brother. It turns out that the man from before was the imposter, as he transforms back into the master of death. The two begins to fight as the first brother sends multiple swords towards the opponent, giving his team the chance to escape the area. However, the leader of the water clan shows up behind the fighters and attacks them using his magic, killing the death lord and gravely wounding the first brother. He then grabs onto Dragonfly and Yun, trying to crush them under his power. Rin sees that her friends are about to be killed and screams in rage, releasing her powers and impaling the water lord using his own attacks. The girl manages to save everyone as they drop to the ground. When Yun finally wakes up, he runs towards Ring and sees that she's close to dying after using all her powers. The girl grabs onto the second brother, and the man begins seeing a vision from their previous master. The spirit tells Yun that the girl is the true successor of the guild, and the holder of Dunja's great power. She's destined to be the savior of the human race and the one who's going to destroy the alien monsters. But Yun wonders how that's possible as he sees the girl take her last breath. The group buries the girl, and the first brother tells his comrades that Rin gave them her powers before her death. They have to use this ability to destroy the demons and save humanity. Sometimes later, the red demon begins noticing something in the sky, as a giant rock flies towards them which knocks the black demon onto the ground. 
The team prepares to fight as they levitate in the air, but the creature breaks free from the boulder and flies towards Dao. The two clashes in the air repeatedly, but the demon is clearly no match for the man and gets punched through the air and crash lands on the ground. The red demon charges towards Dragonfly, attacking with her claws and wings, but the strikes are easily evaded and the woman counters with a kick that sends the creature flying downwards as well. Seeing that they're clearly no match for the power of Dunja, the red demon takes out the Slayer of Gods and shoots numerous bombs at Dragonfly while Yun tries to protect the woman by blocking the attack. However, before the explosions can reach the people, the flow of time is slowed down and the peacock demon flies into the sky from the graveyard. She charges towards the red demon and takes away all the bombs into the air, but the creature flies after the peacock and traps her using the tentacles. The red demon then shoots at the peacock using the slayer of gods, while the black demon flies to attack from the opposite direction as well. In the last moment, the giant bird manages to break free, causing the bombs to hit the black demon and kills it in the process. The red demon gets knocked away by the shockwave, but the peacock grabs onto her and throws her into the bombs, causing a chain reaction of explosions which kills the creature as a result. Ring flies out from the flames towards her comrades, and the people are shocked to see that their friend is alive, as they all finally embrace together once again. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.